Why using some apps are easy on your eyes while others make your eyes squint? It's all about making the right color choice. Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing about how to make color choices that don't just look amazing but also make your product easy to use. We will also discuss about color contrast, the type of colors that you need to set up for your project and also why having color scales are important. Let's start. First things first. When you start picking colors, start from the basics. What is the tone of your product? Think about how you want your users to feel when they use it. Is it more fun and playful or is it more calm and professional? For example, colors like yellow and orange feel energetic and friendly, while colors like blue and gray gives a very calm and reliable feeling. So, colors can instantly set the vibe or the mood of your product. So, once you have decided on the tone and emotion that you want to convey, it's time to think about the type of colors that will make up your palette. So, generally for any project, we set up three types of colors, which is primary, semantic and neutrals. And sometimes you might also want to set up an accent or a secondary color as well. But for this video, we will be discussing about these three types. So let's start with what is primary color. So primary color is that one color that you will mostly use for all the key design elements in your design, like the buttons, the navigations, the headers, etc. And most of the time, primary color is the brand color, but it need not be the case. Sometimes your brand color might be a bright yellow or orange and it might not pass certain accessibility standards. So in such a case, your primary color can be a complementary color to your brand color or it can be some other color of your choice. So now you know what primary color is. So let's set it up. Let's say you're making an app and you want users to feel calm and reliable when they use it. So you have narrowed down to these three shades of blue. But now how will you know which of this shade will be best for your primary color? For that what you will have to do is you will have to check whether they pass accessibility standards. So here I am going to copy this hex code and go to this platform called color contrast checker and I am just going to paste the hex code there and also change the background color. So before I move any further what is color contrast? Color contrast is basically the difference between the brightness of two colors. So in this case, the selected color and the white background for which the contrast ratio is 2.78 and it is not meeting the minimum accessibility standards. But what are these standards? What is this AA large, AA normal or AAA large and normal? For that, let us first understand what is large and normal. So the largest refer to the text size when it is at least 18 pixels bold or 24 pixels regular. And normal is when your text size is below 18 pixels bold or 24 pixels. And AA is basically your baseline standard for accessibility and it ensures readability with some level of visual impairment. However, AAA is a little more stricter standard ensuring that it is accessible for users with severe visual impairment. So now you know the difference between large and normal and AA and AAA. So what are the minimum contrast ratio requirement for each of these? So for AA normal, the minimum contrast ratio required is 4.5 is to 1. And for AA large, it is 3 is to 1. And for AAA normal, the minimum requirement is 7 is to 1. And for AAA large, the minimum requirement is 4.5 is to 1. Also, if you notice that for AA or AAA large, the contrast requirement is slightly lower because larger texts are easier to read even with slightly lower contrast ratio. Now, since that shade failed for the accessibility test, let's try out the second shade. Now, you can see that the contrast ratio for this is 4.32, which means it does pass the AA large because the requirement was 3 is to 1, but it fails rest of the standards so what you can do is instead of searching for a different shade altogether you can also try to tweak the hsl values here so i just reduce the lightness and you can see that now it passes doubly large and doubly normal as well as triple a large so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change this hex code and i'm also just going to change this color I'm going to maybe use this as the primary color 
but before that let's also check the contrast ratio for this third color i'm copying the hex code doing the same activity here now you can see this again fails the accessibility standards so that is how you can uh, come to a conclusion on which is the best shade for your primary color now let's move on to semantic colors these are the type of colors that communicate actions or statuses of your app for example error success warning info now while you're defining these colors what you need to understand is you don't have to reinvent the wheel meaning users have already associated certain colors to certain meanings for example green for success red for error orange or yellow shade for warning and blue for information instead of that what you will have to worry about is the fact your semantic colors need to feel cohesive with your primary color right so now let's start and set up our semantic colors as well for this i'm going to go to this platform called eva designs so here as you can see you can generate semantic colors based on your primary color so i'm going to copy the hex code of the primary color we selected and i'm going to paste it here now you can see it generates a whole new set of semantic colors and if you're not happy with that you can also click on this refresh button to generate a new set of semantic colors so let's start with the success and looking at the 500 shade it kind of feels like it might not pass the contrast ratio so i'm going to copy the 600 shade and go to color contrast checker so i'm just going to repeat the same activity that we did for our primary color i'll paste the hex code and i'll check for the contrast ratio and then i'll finalize our color shades So now we have our primary and semantic colors. Let's talk about neutrals. So neutrals are your gray, black and white and they help to bring balance to your design and let your primary and semantic colors do all the talking. So how to set them? For this you are going to copy the primary shade and open the color picker. So I'll show this for gray. I'm just going to paste the primary shade and I'm going to open the color picker and now I'm going to drag this to a cooler gray shade. So by doing this what happens is your whole colors, your neutrals will also feel cohesive with your primary color. So I'm going to go with grey color. Now I will repeat the same activity for black as well as white. One tip is never use pure black or white. They are very harsh on users eyes and also on UI. So now uh, we have our primary semantic and neutral colors. Now let's talk about tonal palette. So for that let us take an example. Let's say you are making a button. You know that when you make a button, you also need a hover state, right? Now for hover state, let's say you want the button background to be a little darker. So what you do is you would want to select a darker shade. Now let's say you're just going to pick a darker shade randomly like this. Now what happens is over time for different elements when you want different shades sometimes you might want a lighter shade for background for your toast messages or maybe for your input fields so at times like that if you start picking colors randomly your design will not feel cohesive so what you need to do is set up a tonal palette let's see how to do it so for that i'm just going to open this plugin called foundation color generator i'll open this up here you can actually see like there are different ways to set this tonal palette. I'm going to use the material design style and just going to copy this hex code, paste it here and also call it primary. Right? Now if you notice you can also see all the contrast ratios whether it's passing or failing etc. Now you have the tonal palette in place. What you can do is if you hit on create styles, this will create a primary color style in this file or you can if you hit on palette, it will document all of it like this. I'm also going to hit on create styles and show you this. It shows 10 styles created. Now if I come here, you will see that I have primary 50 to 900 shades. Now similarly what I'm going to do is I make tonal palette for rest of the colors as well. So now we have the tonal palette for primary and semantic colors and I've also added grey. Now when it comes to black and white, so these two colors are mostly used for your text colors. So instead of making the tonal palette in the similar way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just let me take a copy of this black and let's duplicate this a few, a few times. 
right your first shade is going to be the black in full opacity and the second one will be black with 80% opacity and then 60 40 and 20 so why we use opacity based colors for text is mostly because opacity based colors tend to blend well with your background so if we use a 100 shade and black color it usually ends up standing out way too much and having a very harsh look to it that is why we go for uh, opacity based color so now we have the black and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to do the similar activity with the white color as well so that's it guys in this video we discussed about different types of colors and contrast ratios accessibility standards and also we have set up a tonal palette for all the different types of colors we define so i hope you found this video helpful do let me know in the comments below your thoughts your opinions and any feedbacks thank you